folks. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Jeff and Axe Horror Show. Show. My, my name, name is Jeff. Jeff. Over there's my partner, Axe. How you doing, Axe? Doing good, Jeff. All right, well, Axe, uh, first of all, we got to talk about a few things. You know, one of the things is we are going to be starting to do some shorter episodes on the show, and this is kind of the start of that. And for our fans that, you know, all five of you that follow us, we're going to be kind of cutting down some of the episodes, and we're not going to be talking as much about as what what we've watched over the week, and we're just going to kind of focus on the features more so you can kind of get a more in-depth look at the features you know, and we're still going to plug our uh, personal things once in a while, but, you know, we can, we're going to shy away from a whole lot of that, too. Which is going to kind of lead us into our first official short episode, shorter episode theme this week, Axe. And uh, this one was one that you picked, and we decided to go with Roger Corman. And first of all, about Roger Corman, this guy, you know, he directed uh, several films over his career, but mostly produced. You know, this guy was a, a very well-known producer, and, and he is really the, in an essence, kind of the father of low-budget independent horror cinema. You know, you can, obviously, you can attest other people like Herschel Gordon Lewis to that title, but, the, you know, Roger Corman was the most known, most publicized and uh, we got two of the films that he was kind of, you know, behind. Our first one is from 1980. It's a movie called Humanoids from the Deep. And this movie acts kind of tells the story of uh, this fishing town. It's like kind of a resort town, this fishing town. And this couple goes missing and uh, these people don't know what the hell's going on. And then this, this scientist has flown in to, you know, figure out what's going on and... It's Ann Turkle and um, plays uh, uh, Dr. Susan Blake in this film, who is the, the lead scientist in this film. And, and they're trying to figure out, you know, what these uh, these creatures are. You know, this is one of those movies, acts that really kind of has a slow start to it, but it really, um, it picks up. And, and you can certainly tell that this is a late 70s, early 80s film from the beginning. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to, to bring up, X, uh, by now, usually I, I, I mention the director. You know, I always say who directed the film. There was a little bit of a controversy with this film. The original director was a lady by the name of Barbara Peters, and she was actually fired mid-production because she refused to put more flesh and gore and nudity in this film. And so she was replaced by a guy that had no fucking problem doing that because the second half of this film you get that feeling axe that you you can almost tell that it was a different director you know this this movie was definitely going in a different direction in the second half of the film and it's a lot more gory it's a lot more graphic there's more tna and uh jimmy murakomi i hope i'm pronouncing that right was the new director that was brought in to replace barbara peters and i think personally i think he did a great job but you know it's interesting that when that kind of happens x you don't hear about that very often in movies when you know a director gets fired right on set and then all of a sudden there's another director and especially you know when um both are technically credited here uh, however, in the final credits, uh, Jimmy Murakami is is the only credited director, so it's it's a weird situation. I don't know how you feel about that, Axe, but... Yeah, how many directors did The Wizard of Oz have? <laughs> and I was just going to bring that up. It's <laughs> yeah. funny that you said that, because I think The Wizard of Oz technically went through five, if I'm not mistaken, before it ended up with Victor Fleming. and So, you know, don't count it out just because it's got more than one director. So Humanoids of the Deep is actually a pretty awesome movie. I had never seen it before, but I must say that the creatures in this film are pretty awesome. Uh, come to find out, it's uh, Rob Bottin doing the special effects makeup, and he's one of the greatest of all time. He did The Thing, which is maybe the most iconic 1980s special effects. You know, maybe only second to Stan Winston but I don't know. It's your pick on that. But Rob Bottin did amazing work. He did RoboCop. He did The Howling. He did uh, Seven. He's done so many movies throughout his career. It's ridiculous. It's like a page long to just list it all. Off. But the guy, he did these, these uh, creature effects for these fish monsters, you know, these fish people. And, you know, it's very reminiscent of H.P. Lovecraft. 
you know, with uh, like Dagon with these fish monsters. And um, it's super gory. Uh, lots of blood and guts. I really dig that. And you're absolutely right. The second half of the movie kicks way more ass in the first half. And so uh, they did a good thing by letting her go. But yeah, I was really impressed with this movie for 1980. It's pretty out there. I mean, there's a lot of uh, exploitation in this movie. It's pretty hardcore, you know. It doesn't shy away from things, which I like. You know, it's very bold. I'd also like to mention that the soundtrack was written by James Horner, who is super huge in the soundtrack world, right? He did Titanic, Braveheart. What's another one he did? Uh, Avatar was another one. Yeah. It's crazy how a little low-budget movie can have these amazing talents in it. It's repeated throughout time, you know, like I look at, say, for instance, the first Friday the 13th, and you look at an actor like Kevin Bacon, right? To think that Kevin Bacon was in Friday the 13th is crazy to think about now because he's reached such a high level of stardom, and that was such a low-budget horror movie. This is way even more low-budget. Obviously, it's Roger Corman, but, you know, you can't say enough about Roger Corman, Rob Bottin, and James Horner. Like, the combination of that right there just makes this movie really awesome. At the same time, though, man, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's not like it's super good acting. You don't watch these movies because they're, like, spellbinding, okay? <laughs> you watch this movie because it's entertaining, you know? Because it's got shock value, you know? It hits all those right buttons. So, yeah, that's what I got on Humanoids. Yeah, I really enjoyed this film. A couple of things I did have highlighted that I really that really stuck out to me were the um, the character that he's kind of a, a swarmy kind of the asshole in this film. His premise is he comes in and he's trying to build this this cannery on this uh, this fish port, you know, this town, and these people don't want any part of this. You know, they don't want him in this town because he's kind of a he's a real shady guy. You know, his character really stuck out in this. You know, there was some really good moments, like I said, towards the end of the film. For anybody that knows me or has listened to me talk on, on the podcast, you know that I'm a, I love the carnival backdrop thing. You have that freak show type of deal, you know, just that atmosphere. And, and they had the last few scenes of the film acts, you know, where they're at the carnival and the fish people are chasing them around the carnival games and all that shit. And I really dug it. I, I really liked the latter half of this film obviously a lot more than i like the the first half but you know overall it was i thought it was pretty good and it's definitely one of those films that i i think like roger corman films because he has so many that you know people i don't want to say have skipped over but maybe have kind of forgotten they've watched you know you included had never seen this that being said x i'm gonna uh i'm gonna turn things over to you as far as the rating on this film, because I was really on the fence. You know, if it had better acting, I would have gave it a much higher rating. But just based on the special effects alone, I'm going to give three blood drops to Humanoids of the Deep. You know, X, I'm going to have to go a little bit lower on that. I think it's a two and a half or for me. I say that because of the first half of the film. You know, it wasn't, I, I wouldn't even say the first half, really. I would say the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes. You know, really, Axe, was, you could tell when the directors switched. I think it was at the moment where the, uh, the girl and the guy are in the tent and the dummies wisecracking all kinds of ridiculous shit. And, yeah, gonna, gonna get splinters? No, I'm sanded. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it's like, you could tell you have a different director at this point, but, you know, it's not like a feeling like a, uh, you know, Saturday movie matinee anymore. Yeah, it, it, it gets kind of, you know, more campy. It taps more into, you know, the audience that this movie was actually shooting for, you know, with the exploitation and the, you know, the gore. Like I said, you're not looking for spellbinding. You're looking for funny, gory, that kind of stuff, you know, not, not so much uh, drama. <laughs> But, um, you know, two and a half, three, it's it's right there. It's, it's Six of one, half a dozen of the other. I think that signature style that Roger Corman is, is really known for, 
Jimmy Maracomi definitely represented that a lot better than uh, than Barbara Peters did, you know. And the vision, I think, was a, a quite a bit different, you know, from Barbara Peters. And no disrespect, but it's almost like you're watching two different movies. Uh, so that being said, Dax, um, we'll wrap it up on Humanoids from the Deep. And uh, you're going to go with three blood drops. I'm going to go with two and a half. Not a bad film, but definitely not one that you're going to keep in the archives. Moving on, X, we got our next film from 1993. Uh, this film has actually spawned a couple of sequels, um, and it's the film Carnosaur. This is uh, directed by Adam Simon with, I got additional sequences by Darren Maloney. Maloney? I'm butchering that name, and I apologize, folks. Darren Maloney, let's go with that. 1993's Carnosaur starts off with this chemist, biogeneticist, uh, Dr. Tiptree is her name, and she's kind of conducting these experiments. And the weird thing is, is she's conducting these experiments on chickens. And Axe, this movie is not really associated with chickens in any way, other than the, the whole first sequences. And uh, that's where it kind of threw me off right at the beginning. But one thing I wanted to say about this was that this was Roger Corman's way of trying to capitalize on the whole Jurassic Park popularity. You know, this was the, the wave of that. And it's a, this is a strange film that kind of, like I said, focuses on this Dr. Tiptree character. And uh, Clint Howard is a... Now, I, I don't really know his name in the film, but I just... I, actually, I have him written down as a creepy fucker. Yeah. Which, which, I mean, Clint, anybody that knows Clint Howard and knows that Clint Howard is a creepy fucker in everything that he's in. You know, he's, of course, in Ice Cream Man and, you know, some other films, too. But he plays that specific role, you know, really well. And it's the same damn role in every film. You know, he's the, the one scene at the beginning, you know, towards the beginning where he's in the restaurant. And he's just like this real creepy dude, you know, saying these... You know, we've all had that weird experience in a restaurant where, or, or just a public place in general where there's somebody that you're just put off by, you know, like there's somebody that you're just really questionable. And, uh, yeah, Clint Howard does a great job of playing that role. Another thing I wanted to say, Axe, was uh, you are a... Uh, obviously a big fan and we, we have talked about um him on the show before and our original first episode was supposed to be about him but the uh makeup was done by uh, john carl beekler in this and he does a great job with the makeup in this film yeah man yeah that first episode was supposed to be ghoulies and uh yeah we were both sad when he passed because he you know he's one of the greats and there's so few of them left now, but we're at that age where our heroes are dying. And that's just a natural cycle of things. But yeah, Carnosaur, man, it takes me back. I saw Carnosaur way back in the day when I was little. And he was so good at cashing in on the whole Jurassic Park thing because Carnosaur was actually released a little bit sooner than Jurassic Park. So he actually beat them uh, coming out and it actually really helped sales. For the time, the movie did pretty good for a Roger Corman movie, you know? And um, like you said, it, it spawned two sequels. I have to say I like the third more than the second. But, you know, <sighs> the movie's not good. It, it's not. It's fucked up. It's, uh, it's bad. But it does have some good uh, dinosaur gory kill scenes, you know? It's it's fun, too. It's campy. It's It's got all that good shit, too. But it's like... One of those movies that, um, you know, maybe the highlights. <laughs> Watching the highlights on this one might be the better way. Because the acting is awful and the story is real sketchy. Like, okay, we'll go back to the beginning with the chickens, right? The fucking chickens. And it's like, you know, not PETA friendly in this movie. You know, which is 1993, you know? <laughs> Times were different then. But somehow we go from chickens into hatching dinosaurs and then, you know, you have the little baby velociraptor and he's tearing people up and that's pretty cool. And then you got the big ass fucking T-Rex at the end and he's pretty cool. And 
you know, it's dinosaurs fucking killing people. <laughs> like, what do you want, really? <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the blood, they did really good with the blood. It looks good. You know, the kill scenes are pretty awesome, you know? And uh, one thing I'd like to mention about both of these movies have a similar scene where there's like a, a baby hatching out of the stomach, like a, like a chestburster scene from Aliens. I thought that was pretty funny because we didn't plan it, you know. We just picked some Roger Corman Presents type movies, you know. And uh, I'd already seen Carnosaur. Jeff hadn't. Like I said, I grew up watching Carnosaur. I saw all three. But going back and rewatching it, I realized it's, you know, not as good as what my six-year-old brain thought. But all in all, I, I like Carnosaur just for um, the place it holds in history. You know, like, Killer Dinosaurs wasn't really, it wasn't a huge thing when it came out, you know? It was kind of a first of its class kind of thing. And uh, I give it some respect for that, but even though it, it, let's be honest, it's not that good of a movie. But uh, it's got real good blood and guts in it, you know? And that's better than CGI any day, so, hey. Definitely. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I didn't like about this film, Max, was, um, you know, because there was a lot of things I liked about this film, too. But, you know, one of the things that I didn't really care for was, you know, they had the board meetings with this organization that were ahead of the scientist. And it just seemed like they kind of would they had these cut scenes, you know, where they would they would go back to this board meeting and this boring ass, you know, like <laughs> what fucking boring as fuck. Right. It's just like <laughs> no one gives a shit, you know, like it's OK to have a couple of those. But when you're having you're having one, you know, every third or fourth scene, you know, and it's just it gets really repetitive. And it was just like, I know I have brought it up on the show before, but, you know, like the whole League of Supervillains type of thing, you know, and it's like they it's a weird horror cliche with these films that kind of rely on because let's be honest, Axe, this is not a straight horror film by any means. You know, there's there's a lot of elements of, you know, of action and science fiction in this definitely science fiction with the dinosaurs and everything and. You know, so that's kind of what I'm getting at with the backdrop. They have to focus on these scientists and these experiments and all this. And it's, you know, to me, there was just too much of that and uh, not enough fucking killing. You know, like there was some good scenes in this, like you said. And in the, in the one scene I really did enjoy was when the main character, uh, Dr. Tiptree, kind of reveals that she is the antagonist bitch in this film and kind of traps the one guy in the in the cell and the dinosaur just you know tears him to bits but yeah overall i mean it was you know it was okay i definitely enjoyed humanoids uh quite a bit more like overall and and i mean even including that first you know 20 minutes of barbara peters you know days of our lives shit compared to this you know because it's just a it was de it's definitely a different style film but you could you could certainly tell that this is something that corman has backed for sure but um yeah i thought it was okay x that's that's what i got on on carnosaur that being said x i uh i went two and a half on humanoids so in reality i can't i can't go over that on carnosaur I'm going to give Carnosaur... I'm being generous, Axe. I guess I'm feeling generous today. I'm going to give Carnosaur a two. Two solid blood drops. I guess if I wasn't in a good mood, I probably would have went one and a half blood drops. But uh, but I'm going to go two on this one. What, what are you saying, Axe? I'm totally agreeing with you. Two was exactly what I thought. You know, like I said, it's it's got some good highlight scenes. You know, if you want to check out the kill scenes, all that shit's really cool. But... You know, the movie itself is uh, dated, and like you said, the whole sci-fi thing was very, um, it felt made for TV at the time, you know, like that, it was just what was going on, I think, as, you know, that era. One last thing I'd like to say, though, because I guess everybody probably has their own favorite, but I would have to probably say, even though we didn't cover this movie, my favorite Roger Corman movie is very popular. It's Piranha. I grew up watching Piranha 1 and 2, and the second one's pretty funny. But, you know, that first Piranha has actually got really awesome acting. The story and the actors were just really good. Like, it's really riveting. I love the raft part, you know, when they're floating down and stuff. 
And that movie was just, I don't know, maybe it was trying to like be Jaws without being Jaws. You know, so that's what Roger Corman did. He he would take like what we said with Carnosaur, you know, Jurassic Park was about to come out and he knew that. And so he was going to cash in on it. Well, back in the 70s, you know, Jaws was this huge thing. And when Piranha came out, it was kind of, you know, the whole don't go in the water thing was still pretty popular and to me that's my favorite though i mean the remake was was funny and all that but it wasn't a serious movie like like the original and to me that's my favorite roger corman well since we kind of veered off a little bit axe i'll tell you my personal favorite and i would have to say that you know um like it's the ultimate cheese film and i would go with mask of the red death is probably my favorite. This has always been a guilty pleasure of mine, but I'm a, I'm a big Vincent Price fan. I just think he's somebody that he he got to be a, a famous actor, you know, and the the notoriety that he uh, was able to attain over the years from really not being that great of an actor. Like I just don't think I've never thought Vincent Price was a great actor. I just think he was kind of Vincent Price was damn good at being himself. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the reasons that he is also on, you know, a lot of voiceovers and audiobooks and all kinds of stuff. You know, this guy didn't, it was just so easy for him. You know, Axe, I'm a big Batman fan. And, and one thing that I will say is, you know, Vincent Price's Egghead was mm-hmm. uh, one of my favorite, you know, really lesser known Batman villains. And if you're you're not a fan of the TV show, you don't even know who the hell I'm talking about, you know, with, with Egghead. But so, yeah, that's that would probably be my favorite uh, Roger Corman film. You know, I, I also uh, really enjoyed the, the Pit and the Pendulum, too. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that being said, Axe, we'll wrap things up here. I went with two and a half blood drops on 1980s humanoids from the deep you went with three blood drops and for carnosaur axe and i both agree which doesn't happen very often folks and uh we are both going two blood drops on that one and uh that's gonna wrap things up for the jeff and axe horror show my name is jeff and i'm axe and we will catch you next time